Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and today you are joining me on a brand new video. It is dated home designs in need of a major upgrade, the viewer submissions episode. You might remember from my last dated home designs in need of a major upgrade video, I asked you to send me in your dated spaces. My team and I reviewed all of your dated home designs and we wanted to offer you really fresh solutions on how you can update and upgrade your space for not a whole lot of money. So if you want some creative solutions on how to upgrade your dated space, this video is for you. Before we get started, I'd like to thank Brooklinen for sponsoring this video. Brooklinen was founded on the philosophy that everyone deserves simple, beautiful home essentials without the luxury markup. I've been sleeping on Brooklinen sheets for years now, and I'll tell you exactly why I love them. I have the Lux Satin sheets, and they are so luxurious, so buttery soft, and I also love that they have this really refined, crisp hand to them that makes me feel like I'm sleeping on luxurious hotel bedding sheets. Their best-selling Lux Satin sheets are the ultimate in bedding upgrade. It's perfect for elevating your sheet game with a slightly luminous finish. If you're looking for something a little bit more flat and matte, you should try their cotton percale or their linen bed sheets. Sateen is usually more tightly woven and heavier in weight than percale, making it warmer and buttery soft and really ideal for year round comfort. You can choose to mix and match from over 20 different colors and patterns to fit your particular style. Exciting news! Brooklinen is now having their holiday sale, which means you can get all Brooklinen products for 15% off until the end of the month. If you're looking for a special gift to give for the holidays, or if you simply want to treat yourself, you definitely want to check out their sale. All you need to do is click the link in my description box for the discount to be applied directly at checkout. Now that SoCal is getting a little bit chillier, I really love to layer my bed with all of these Brooklinen essentials. I'm starting with this super comfy, cozy, fluffy, down alternative mattress topper that's also water repellent. I'm layering on my Lux Satin sheets and I really love this cream color. Instead of purchasing individual sheets, why not try the Lux Hardcore Sheet Bundle? You can actually save 25% on all of these sheets. It includes the flat sheet, the fitted sheet, two pillowcases, and even a duvet cover. I'm finishing off the look with this 100% pure wool throw in the latte color. I love how this look instantly warms up my space and it's giving me all of the winter feels. Now back to our video on dated home designs. Did your space make the cut? My team and I had so many different emails to thumb through and we really chose these homes based on how relatable they were and how easily I can come up with a solution that was not only affordable, budget conscious, but also creative. Toyo Kimura writes in, there's a single story, four bed, two bath home that my wife and I recently purchased. They're also first time homeowners. The house was built in 1964 and is outdated, dirty, and anything but welcoming. We hope to create a warm and welcoming environment where we can comfortably raise our three-year-old daughter, host holiday parties, and continue our life journey as a family. I'm sure that there are so many of you out there that can relate to this home. It's a single family residence, it's not that large, and of course you're throwing a toddler into the mix. So of course storage and organization is really key anytime you're building a life for a small family. I'm looking at this living room picture and of course there's just a mishmash of furniture. I love a really good solid mix of collected items, especially when you're mixing modern furnishings with heirloom furniture, and I get it. A lot of us have hand-me-down furniture that we're really trying to make work in a space. The issue with this particular space is, number one, there's no real focal point. I don't really understand what the homeowners are trying to use the space for. It really looks like they just moved in and they kind of just plopped all of the furniture down and they're still trying to figure out how to use the space, which is very, very common. If you don't have a solid plan in place, your furniture is really not going to serve its true purpose. You have this L-shaped configuration with a futon, a side chair, and a sofa. So while everyone who's seated in this seating group can actually have a conversation with each other, they're not really looking towards anything. I mean, the biggest issue here seems to be lack of function, lack of a focal point, and definitely lack of storage. If the family does any type of TV watching in this space, that would be the first priority. You would try to figure out where would you place the television. 
If you kept this exact same configuration, I would place the television where the clock currently sits. I wouldn't place it over the fireplace mantle because if you remember from my previous videos, that is a common design mistake. Typically, a television placed above the mantle is too high to ergonomically watch the TV from a comfortable position. You could place the television on a really long console. I would probably look for a television console that spans the width where the solid wall is all the way to the right of the wall underneath that set of windows. What you're going to gain from this elongated console is not only a really really solid focal point, but also a ton of storage space for the kids toys, for your knickknacks, for pretty much everyday essentials that you'll need in the living room. Moving on to the kitchen. From the image alone, it doesn't look like the kitchen is in terrible shape. I mean, the espresso color on the cabinets, it's a little dated. I mean, it's a very 90s color. And of course, the layout isn't really too functional. I love the idea of having a piece of furniture in the kitchen like this movable island or cart. If you have a kitchen without a whole lot of countertop space, this is such a great idea to push in a rolling cart in there. You'll have additional workspace for the kitchen. It's also a really great place for you to set down items that you pull out of the refrigerator. And at the same time, it can also serve double duty if you need a place to dine. What this kitchen definitely lacks is a little personality and style. The easiest thing that you could do to upgrade the kitchen is simply paint the cabinets. There's just a whole lot of browns and tans going on, so I would love to see some color on the cabinets. I'm a really huge fan of green cabinets. You'll remember that from my Kitchen Design Trends video that we dropped just last month. So painting the cabinets in a really beautiful neutral hue like blues or greens could really amp up the style factor. I would also love to see a little bit more lighting added to the space. Right now, there's a singular flush mount fixture that's not even centered over the sink. So since there's already electrical wiring up there, you can call on a professional electrician to come and estimate the space and possibly even add in recessed can lights that would better illuminate the space. I would also add in new hardware to the cabinet doors. I mean, nothing elevates the space like adding some really strategic metal finishes, maybe even brass or matte black. Matte black would look really beautiful with like a powder blue cabinet and brass would look stunning against like a sage green. You can also add in a lot of texture and dimension to the kitchen with bamboo shades right above the sink. And this last image from Toyo Kimura looks like it's the family room. I won't be addressing the floor plan a whole lot because that's something that you have to figure out as a homeowner. First, you have to figure out the function of the space. What is it that you do in here? Clearly, they watch television in here. It's also a makeshift playroom. If you're going to be using a particular space to not only watch TV, but it's also your kid's play area, just like mine is in my living room, then definitely storage is going to be a huge priority in that space. What I really want to touch on is this sliding patio door that's adjacent right next to a pair of L-shaped windows. I mean, you have two windows that meet at the corner and then a pair of sliders. A lot of viewers write in and ask me how would I address this particular issue and this is how I would do it. I would install an adjustable curtain rod that spans the entire width of that wall. You can order corner brackets that actually turn the corner so that you could have the exact same drapery panels that span all the way across those sliders onto the windows and then turns the corner and then attaches to the brackets and the rod on the adjacent wall. What you get is a really seamless elevation of all curtain panels. The fact that these curtains are installed on the rod in between these brackets, you'll have ultimate functionality where you can kind of slide them left and right depending on how you use the space. If the sliding doors open left, you would pull the curtains left. If you want the curtains to open out from the windows, then you would pull them to the left and the right. The thing that I love about this look is that it gives you a really seamless body of color or texture or pattern. That's how you can marry two distinct zones together, especially when they're in an open concept space. Moving on to the next dated home design. Eileen Ang writes in, I'm moving to a new home at the end of the month. I just watched your dated home designs episode four. You suggested painting the fireplace white, but I think it's going to look like a Michelin man. The stones are large and puffy looking. I'm repainting the walls to a Sherwin Williams white duck. 
I don't know what to do with the fireplace. My style is Japandi. I have a ton of black lacquer furniture. If you have a dated stone fireplace like Eileen, I can see why you can't really see past this monstrosity. I mean, there's a whole lot of big bulbous stones and you also have this really huge wood mantle. If you really want to embrace the Japandi style, which is a combination of Japanese wabi-sabi with really clean modern lines of Scandinavian, you're not going to be able to achieve that look if you painted this entire thing white. I mean, Wabi Sabi is really all about embracing imperfections. It's all about looking to nature to inspire the designs that we want to adopt into our space. It's loving a natural stone finish, embracing a really huge wood mantle. So you really wouldn't do much to this design. What you would do instead is leave it alone and allow the remaining space to really support this huge feature of your home. However, if you decided that you wanted to just zhush it up a little bit and you did want to whitewash the stone fireplace, here are some looks that I think totally work. You don't have to give it a heavy wash of white paint or white lacquer, but what you can do is kind of touch it up in phases. You can allow that natural stone finish to peek through without feeling like there's so much contrast in color and dimension. This next dated home design submission comes from Kelly Yamada. This is my dated main floor bathroom that guests use. I hate the gold shower doors. The tile countertops are dated, as is the light fixture, sink, and faucet. It probably wouldn't bother me so much if the shower door wasn't so ugly. The cabinets can be painted, though I prefer flat panel door fronts prominent in Scandinavian designs. I would love any suggestions. My design style tends to lean towards Japandi and Scandinavian. Here's my attempt at a video. Japandi and Scandinavian is still so hot in design right now and I can understand why. Everyone craves a really calming, relaxing feel to any space, whether or not it's a bathroom, a living room, a bedroom, even a kitchen. You want all of those really beautiful natural calming finishes without any one thing standing out. This polished brass shower door is something that I'm pretty sure all of us have lived with at one point in our lives. I remember having this in my childhood home and I think it didn't bother me so much back then because all of the fixtures were dated. You can't actually refinish the shower doors with a can of Rust-Oleum paint. It's a really inexpensive way to completely change the look of this dated design, but it does take a little bit of prep work. You want to give the metal a really quick sanding, then you'll be ready to mask up the walls and the glass. What you're looking for is an exterior grade spray paint that doesn't rust and it's water repellent. I love how matte black instantly updates polished brass and it feels modern, fresh, and inviting. A lot of us have these honey oak cabinet colors that feel very 80s and early 90s. I made a really awesome video on best paint colors to pair with existing wood trim. This goes for wood cabinets, wood flooring, really you're looking for paint colors to pair with wood tones that you're not completely in love with. Japandi style is all about raw, natural finishes. So you can also take a sander to all of the wood trim that you see in this bathroom. You see the wood trim that's kind of lining this ledge. You can sand down the cabinet as well. A really easy way to upgrade dated cabinets is to simply change out that panel door. You can keep the existing box and just look for a really modern flat panel that you can affix right onto this vanity. I would definitely remove the builder grade mirror. I would swap out the sink faucet and change out the shower fixture so that they coordinate with your new metal finish. If you went with matte black, I would choose matte black fixtures. If you went with something like satin nickel, I would also upgrade the hardware so it doesn't have that polished finish on it. Here are some ideas for a new freestanding mirror and a new vanity sconce to go with your new Japandi theme. That's it for today's video on dated home designs in need of a major upgrade, the viewer submissions episode. I had so much fun making this video, so I want to hear from you. If you have a dated home design or if you have any burning questions when it comes to your home's interior, definitely write in and let us know. Submit your design dilemma and a few photos so we know what we're working with. Email kelly at juliekoo.com and we cannot wait to see how we can help you. Thank you again to Brooklinen for sponsoring this video. And remember that you can shop Brooklinen's holiday sale right now and get 15% off your purchase.
If you like this type of content and you're loving the Date at Home Design series, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know, what would you do with these spaces? Did you like my solutions? Do you have anything else to add? Share this video and this series with anyone you know who's looking to upgrade their date at home designs. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop every single Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.